four ways to measure energy use and some important facts about each. So the most practical weight changes. The other practical way is indirect calorimetry and that um, is because it's portable if you have the machine. It is used mostly in athletes and burn victims and it looks at the respiratory quotient which is carbon dioxide out divided by oxygen consumed and it's telling us, it's really cool, it tells us which nutrients we're using the respiratory quotient. So if you're using carbohydrate, it's one. If you're using fat, it's 0.7. So if you're wanting to lower your RQ, you're gonna increase your fat. That kind of makes sense. Um, there is direct calorimetry, but that's going into a chamber, not super practical, not used a whole lot. Um, you have basal energy expenditure. It is measured in two ways. It can be measured by um, your basal metabolic rate, which is calculated by the Benedict equation, or it can be measured by your resting metabolic rate, uh, which is about 10 to 20 percent increase. So it's an update from Benedict was St. Jor. So he updated it and said, hey, I can make it a little bit better. And that's the one that we typically use the most. It's more accurate. Um, we use it for normal to obese individuals. And um, our basal metabolic rate is measuring oxygen consumed again. It's influenced by two primary things, and that is going to be age and gender. Our infants, zero to two, are going to be having the highest metabolic rate. They're growing really fast. Some other things to consider, uh, thyroid function measured by the protein-bound iodine. So hormones impacted from the thyroid, body composition, weight, surface area, genetics, medication, diseases, fever, hypertension, cancer. All those things are going to impact our metabolic rate. So when we have some diseases or burn victims, fever, our body's working harder. So it's using more energy. And that is my four different ways to measure energy use.